Arbuckle. You ever hear of him? Yeah, I've heard of him. You think he liked that name, Fatty? Yeah, I think he was fat. He was fat, by the way. He was <laughs> like, you don't want a skinny guy and they call him Fatty. This guy was fat. Oh, like, yeah, big guy. I mean, Artie tiny. Used, Artie used to be heavy set. What, what, I mean, <laughs> well, how would you like to be called Fatty Lang? Well, uh, I... You I, wouldn't. You wouldn't like it. Admit it. I have credits in movies where I only have a few lines, and uh, Fatty Lang. And, and on IMDb, it just says fat guy. <laughs> See, it doesn't make you feel good. So, but with a PH. But you know that Fatty Arbuckle did it because it built a career around it. And then, of course, I think he ended up in jail. I and think then, so, yeah. You know, died a horrible, lonely death. Yeah. But, you know, look, that'll, that might not happen to you. If I were you, I'd get back in that little car and drive off a cliff. Do you think he preferred? Would you think Fatty Arbuckle would have preferred to be called Adam Arbuckle and have no career? <laughs> or have a career fatty. and be Fatty Arbuckle? What do you think, Eric? <laughs> I guess the other uh, being called, you know, Fatty Arbuckle and having a career. Exactly. You That's know, the way I look at it. It backfires on people when they when they have an embarrassing name and they don't get the career. Like there's a road comic named Looney Skip Rooney. <laughs> I know Looney. Do you know Looney? I yeah. know Skip. Yeah, he used to do our show. <laughs> uh, maybe that's how I know him. He's from the Uncle Floyd show. Yeah, Looney. Yeah, Looney. Is he? doing co com comedy on the road? <laughs> he might be. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't work as well. I mean, I'm sure Looney has, you know, some fun. Looney Skip Rooney. Looney yeah. Skip Rooney. You call him Looney when you say, hey, Looney. <laughs> I call him Looney. <laughs> That's the best ever, Looney Skip Rooney. <laughs> Looney Skip Rooney is so great. I think I once had him on. I, I know what it was. Here's a story. I was at NBC Radio. <laughs> And when I was in Washington, I used to have a, b a bunch of guys who worked with me called the Think Tank. And these were three guys who were funny. One of the guys had a funny laugh. Right. And I got to NBC, and they were ripping apart my act. They, they basically had disassembled the whole show. Robin wasn't on the show. Fred, they reluctantly let him come in, but they wouldn't let him talk. Did Fred work with you in Washington? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. right. You were there. And so and you guys worked with these guys, the, sure. the yeah, Think Tank, right? Yeah. yeah. So we worked with these guys at the Think Tank. Of course, they wouldn't let me bring the Think Tank to New York. It would have been too much money, and they hated my guts anyway, uh, NBC. It was already costing too much. Yeah, it was already costing too much. And they were already <laughs> plotting to get rid of me. Right. right. So, you know, it wrecked my career. So anyway... I had a friend, Brian Battles, who I knew from radio, who worked with me in Hartford, and he had kind of a strange laugh. So I said, hey, Brian, you mind coming up? 
and doing the first couple of shows with me. And, you know, you know if something grabs you, let that crazy laugh of yours out. You'll just be in the background. You won't even be mic'd. thought it would be funny because uh. no one, in, you know, on NBC, you never heard anything like that. Nobody and was laughing. Everything was very sterile. Right. So he had this weird laugh, like, hey, 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 you know, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Brian comes up all the way from Hartford. He's excited. To laugh. Know, to laugh, you know, and just kind of be part of the ambiance of the room. It's a good gig, man. Uh, yeah, it wasn't even like a job or anything. It was just like, hey, help me get through the first day. So let's see what happens kind of thing. And. We do the first show, and Pig Vomit, the program director, Pig Virus, he uh, writes me an immediate email. He goes, I don't know Brian Battles. He goes, but um, if I ever see him in that studio again or hear of him in the building, I will have him thrown out <laughs> and evicted. I don't want anybody laughing on the show. Wow. Can you, know. you imagine getting a memo like that? No. I'll have the guy thrown out. I think so, it's funny that he, Howard got an email in 1981. Well, no, I said I got a memo. A, a memo. You said email. Oh, did I? Sorry. I, I, meant a memo. I thought I heard memo. <laughs> but anyway, I get this memo, and, and, and everyone in, in, at NBC gets the memo, too. Like, this was part of the humiliation of working at NBC. That's unbelievable. He yeah. said, I don't want anyone laughing. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't understand why there, this guy was in the studio. This right. is, he had not bargained for it, nor had it been approved by him. This is how horrible my life was then. I mean, yeah, knowing I was, you now, I, I, I was can't miserable. Am, knowing you now, I can't imagine. I was insane. you having to listen to somebody like that. Like, well, like I, having I, to acknowledge it. Like, that's why the movie Private Parts worked so well for me because it was like every time in radio you go to a new market and you finally break free of the program director and don't have to listen to them anymore. Then you leave for a better market. Right. And you're right back at square one, and it is absolutely maddening. And if I had to go through it all over again, I couldn't. I, you know, it's a young man's game. Well, I, I think you, you do it because you don't realize it's going to keep happening. Right. One of my favorite parts of private parts is when it, it just I feel your pain so much. Like you're so happy that the ratings are big or what you. Yeah. And then I, I think it's in Washington. And one of the sales guys tells you, you because of your content, they're losing sponsors. Right, like, nobody goes, will buy this show. Goes, and, and he goes, look, this isn't some furniture store. This is stereo fucking city. Right. <laughs> well, that's what it was always like. It, you, one step forward, two steps back. Right. Like the Paul Abdul song. Anyway, I... She gets it. She gets it. Paul Abdul gets it. That's why, by the way, that's why she can't speak English. She's a completely broken woman. Because of, her, because of her songs, I wear a patch that delivers me pain medication. So anyway, I, you know, so Brian, poor Brian couldn't even be part of our show. And somehow, I, I you know, me and my wormy way went, you know, hey, Brian... Uh, I didn't want to insult them by saying the, the pig virus never want them in the studio again. Right, you'll be arrested and yeah. thrown out. So I just basically never gave him a reason why he was back or whatever. I don't know what I did. I, I try to ease the pain and make it nice. So then I said, gee, I really miss that element on my show. And the Uncle Floyd show was on. And Uncle Floyd had a guy in the background who laughed at a lot of stuff. It was Looney Skip Rooney. Yeah, I remember, remember that. I didn't know that. I thought it was just a cameraman with a weird no. laugh because there was always one guy. No, it was Looney Skip Rooney. That was Looney. And Looney sometimes would be on camera. He'd come in and say, hey, Floyd. Right. And do this wild sort of joke or, you know, kind of funny joke or something and then leave. So I figured, well, pig virus isn't going to <laughs> challenge Looney Skip Rooney because Looney's on TV. It's not the same as Brian doing the laugh. We'll get we'll get Looney Skip Rooney, who is famous. <laughs> of course, the Uncle Floyd show was on like channel a, a UHF channel on channel 38 right, or something you can at the time. Hardly pull it in. He I was try. famous in Paramus, New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had a local following. So now, Uncle Floyd in Jersey was huge. I asked Looney if he would come in and sort of hang out and laugh. <laughs> so. Right, Fred? Absolutely. Yeah, so, I remember this. Yeah, I know where this is going. So Looney comes in. I can't wait to hear where it's going. Well, I, I'm not even sure I remember where it's going. I'm going to have to rely on Fred and Robin's memory. But I believe what happened was Looney came in a couple of times, and uh, he was a lot of fun and a good guy. kind of got it, knew that, you know, he wasn't like sort of an on-mic guy. He was just kind of in the background there and once in a while chime in. And uh, I believe Pig Virus was steaming. Oh, yeah. Steaming. Hated but him. Hated Looney Skip Rooney. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, didn't a memo come? A Another couple of one. Same one. Same memo. It's like he just, he just whited out the <laughs> other name. 
put in Looney Scaproni's yeah. name. In other words, I will have him thrown out of the building. Pig, yeah. and so, was anything, you know, close to fun is not allowed here. Yeah. So my head between my legs, I had to go to Looney, who was, of course, a big television star, <laughs> and say, Looney, look. Dear Looney. Hey, Looney, I got a memo. Okay, how do you write a letter to that? I, I don't know what I'm going to say, but. I got it. You can't come. You're not allowed in the building anymore. He goes, what did I do? What did I do? Uh, you think I'm not allowed in the NBC building anymore? He Looney, goes, you were laughing. <laughs> you were having fun. So Looney was banned from the show. And even uh, years later when I had Uncle Floyd, I don't think Looney was allowed in. No, he in. couldn't come in. That's right. And uh, and so that's the story of Looney mm, Skip Rooney. That's great. And, you know, it was unbelievable to me, unbelievable to me that this pig virus, who had never been on the air, who had never gotten an eight share in Washington, D.C. He might have been on. He, I think he was one of those, like, wonderkins, like, that got a job in radio when he was, like, 16 well, years old. whatever. But it was shit radio. Yeah, it was shit radio. And, and you know, and here is a guy who hasn't been in my shoes. They're hiring me because I have an ear for this thing. And he's just emasculating me that whoever I bring in is no good. Uh, horrible. Uh, terrible. And, uh, quite frankly, I mean, he, he, would, he, would, he was against Fred. He was against Rob, and he was yeah, against he was anyone. Against everything and anything. But you know, with those people, I could at least put up a fight. Right. The Looney Skip Rooney, I couldn't. <laughs> you couldn't I, justify I, Looney. I couldn't. I couldn't win the Looney Skip Rooney <laughs> battle. You should have gotten even more famous. Like so now, we're bringing in Looney Mickey Rooney. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a guy who originally used to laugh on my show. His name was um, uh, who was the guy in the think tank? Steve. Uh, Steve. Steve Chaconis. I couldn't think of his name. He's a good guy. I think he's still on radio. He actually, the guy, I found him. Steve was like in a non-related business. He was in a car, a car dealer, dealer. Something like that. I think he sold medical supplies. That's what it was. Was it medical supplies? Yeah. yeah. And he was a funny guy. <laughs> That's a great side job. And I think after we left Washington, of course, we couldn't bring him to NBC. He uh, became a news guy in oh, Washington. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Steve Chaconis, yeah, he became a... A newsman on the all news station or wow. something. Wow. Yeah. For some, for, reason, for some reason, that name sounds familiar to me. Maybe I've. We've mentioned seen him. Steve Chaconis before. Oh, okay. Maybe. Maybe you've seen him out there on, on the road. Maybe. He was yeah. part of the magic. Part of the magic. And, uh, you know, but so I couldn't bring Steve to New York. They would never have done that. And Steve had a wife and two kids. He was, you know, he, he couldn't have come on the road for $4. I don't think Steve had any kids at that time. No? No. I thought he did. Oh, yeah. New York City with ten grand a year. It's your oyster. How did you stay in this house? You didn't notice there were no children. <laughs> I thought I saw children, but I realized it was Fred. You stayed with Steve Chacon. <laughs> Lived with Steve for a month. Fred and I. Uh... I'm reading something here now. Steve Chaconis is a former radio and TV talk show host who's been fishing on the Potomac since the mid 1960s. He fishes local tournaments and writes for several publications covering the Bassmasters Tournament really? Trail for radio and newspapers. So apparently, oh. I guess he no longer fishes tournaments to focus his attention on his clients. He always takes his clients to the best spots. So well, he's doing it. what he loves. Yeah. He takes people fishing. Yeah. He He's in the fishing He's a, like a professional fisherman. And he takes people and fishing he take, and teaches and them And he's a fishing. guide. I guess he has a captain's license. And uh, he writes for uh, publications. No kidding. Uh, that's great. It sounds peaceful. Sounds like a wonderful thing to do. Sounds like he's happy. Yeah. He's a very personable guy. You know. Gee. I wonder if he misses laughing. <laughs> I'm sure he laughs uh, when he's going for bass. No, yeah. you can't. You've got to be very serious. You've got to be quiet. Uh, yeah. oh, I've been on some bass trips, Rob, you can laugh. You know how oh, yeah, look at what Gary just handed me. Afternoon drive with Art Rooney. He's no longer Looney Skip Rooney. He had to get out of the Looney Skip Rooney business. Oh, cool. Art, Art Rooney. Art Rooney has had a very successful television career during his time as Looney Skip Rooney with the <laughs> Uncle Floyd Show. He has always kept his hands in radio, working in major markets in Florida and New York, and has found a home on WGHT. He was a regular on Howard Stern's show on 66 WNBC in the 80s and remains one of the best jocks in the business. There wow. he is. Looney Skip Rooney is no longer Looney Skip Rooney. He's Art Rooney. That's got to be how I know that.